fact, but the Western Australian Parliament has a parliamentary mace. Why? Uh, I can't remember why. But by memory, it was redesigned by a group of people involved with the Mad Max film. So essentially, WA Parliament is legally protected by a Mad Max maze. No, <laughs> I've heard some pretty lame blame games being played by the Liberal and National Party about our member for the Pilbara, Kevin Michelle. I have to absolutely commend the Newman Community Discussion for tearing up the empty tin of Marla that is our Liberal member, Camilo Blanco, for his unfactual attacks on Labor. I feel I have an obligation to shed some light on some of Labor's accomplishments in the region which include, but is not limited to, delivering over $70 million to upgrade and expand schools in Roburn, Caratha, Newman and Wickham, $70 million investment in the Headland Senior High School, a policy that has been attacked by the National Party, Kevin Michelle's raising issue regarding the $600 credits and the fact that Newmanites aren't billed directly as asked by Newman residents, Small Bank Marina in Port Hedland, the Newman Hospital, and famous Munurara Red Dog Highway that connects Caratha to Tom Price. Labor's infrastructure projects are going along in the Pilbara at such a high rate that by McGowan's third term, there will be probably one of those Elon Musk super tunnels going from Newman to Kiwakura. And the Labor government maintaining the $4 billion of commitments to royalties for regions. That's just to name a few. Kevin ain't no Kodak. Kevin Michelle has uh, made sure that the Labor government has kept true to a uniform tariff policy that ensures every Western Australian pays the same price of electricity regardless whether or not they live in the Pilbara or live in Perth. I refer to the McGovern Labor government's commitment to the uniform tariff policy that ensures every West Australian pays the same price for electricity. Which is a big deal for people who live in the Pilbara as we live in bumfuck nowhere and thus electricity prices would be higher if the uniform tariff policy did not apply. It is a system that is a lot better than the Tasmanian system that the Liberal government wants to put into WA which due to near monopoly ownership by one power company means that Tasmanians do have to pay for power with an arm and a leg. A system that does only work in Tasmania because they usually have a finger or two to spare. Ah uh, yes, I finally had my dream of having five fingers. Oh wait, no that's four. F I sold my wrong finger. It's my other hand that has six fingers, see? It seems that Liberal government sees debating in Parliament to be the same as primary school debates, where they would rather debate Labour on pure aesthetic differences like school uniforms rather than debate them on factual topics like uniform tariff policy, which actually affects house prices in regional WA. Look, and I completely understand why the Liberals and Nationals want to do this. When it comes to aesthetic differences, the Nationals got it in the bag. They wear cowboy hats with such a fantastic authenticity and also are completely dog shit when it comes to actual policy. People say that Mark McGowan is the only reason that they would vote for Labour in the election, but I do need to emphasise the fact that one of the only reasons Mark McGowan is able to deliver good things for the rest of the state is simply because he's got Labour members in his ear, those that are elected, telling him what is wrong with the community. You're only as good as the friends that you've got. And Mark McGowan has the best friends of them all. So people like Kevin Michelle are the reason good policies are being implemented into the Pilbara. If it wasn't for Kevin and Michelle, Mark McGowan wouldn't be able to know this kind of stuff, and the rest of the Parliament wouldn't be able to know this kind of stuff, so they would not be able to make those informed decisions as effectively if Kevin Michelle was not there. So to say that he was useless would be a complete and utter lie. The Nationals seem to deploy the exact same strategy in WA as the Greens do federally. Waxing and waning that their policy is superior in every way, but with no realistic way of actually pushing the policy given they are too small to get into power. And even if they do end up holding the balance of power and push comes to shove, they don't end up even trying to get their promises delivered. For those who want a much simpler explanation for how the party dynamics work in WA, I put in this uh, wonderful visual gag for you. This, this wonderful example, you see, yeah. Well guys, went to the shop, got you guys a tin of Marlowe. Well, it's not good enough. Want an extra large. Well, I asked the shop how much would be enough until the next shopping trip, and um, they recommended this. I cross-referenced it with the Milo website just to make sure, and they said, yeah, this would be the right amount. It's pathetic. Disgraceful. 
We haven't had a Tuna Milo in 50 years. Ever since Colin Barnett and Harold bolted after saying he'd get her from the shops. You get Perth a bigger Tuna Milo than us. Ours is tiny, they want a family value pack. Because the Perth household has two pairs of octuplets. That's 16 children in one household, all 10 years old. What, so you say you don't care about a household? No, I got all the Milo I could reasonably afford given I have to take care of 10 households. We haven't had Milo in 50 years. Which is why I got you Milo. You'll never get us Milo because you don't care about us rural bunch. I am literally holding it in my hand right now. Disgrace. Not good enough. Now, I finally had some Milo. It's empty. Wait a second. This isn't Milo. This is just Cadbury drinking chocolate. I was lied to.